Hi there, I'm Matt Keen. Thanks for visiting Creating a Future We Want, the Evaluative Evolution Series in the garden. As usual, it is the start and it is the end. I begin the day here in the garden. Just like uh, about two weeks ago, I started out uh, checking things out, finding out what varmints are eating my tomatoes or eggplant or basil or whatever it is and uh, then I cruise out to surf good surf that day and uh, sitting over a monster hole with my buddy Art Art's maybe uh, no offense Art if you ever watch this but I'm guessing 70 ish something like that Awesome guy, very pleasant person to spend a little bit of time with uh, in the water. He and I are chatting, and as we are talking, hmm, a few hundred yards off the beach, nobody else, just the two of us, from, <laughs> from the water leaps a spinner shark. Do, does its thing, spins like crazy, <laughs> lands, splashes, <clears throat> so close to us, we're maybe 10, 12 feet apart, 15 maybe, so close to us, splashes us both. This is an amazing day, oh my gosh, I can't believe I just happened. And that shark was there fishing around us the whole time we were out there surfing. The first part of my surf session was a total disaster. The day before, I had done a very hardcore, like, lower body workout. Slept terribly the night before. A new good surf was coming, so I'm up at 6 and out the door the whole time there, thinking maybe I shouldn't be. <laughs> But then, oh my gosh, Art went in, just me out there, and the wind just kind of turned just right, settled down a little bit, the tide dropped just a little bit more, and this wave starts reeling down this finger of white sand. You know, it's like six feet deep and then two feet deep. Beautiful. Like... It was <laughs> just slipping, slipping and sliding, and mm, amazing. Catch two, three, four waves, beautiful, fantastic. And then it kind of turns off, and I kind of turn off, and I'm exhausted, and, um, well, there's a lot more to the story, but basically seven or eight stitches later... I am thinking about why, like, nobody ever tries to surf surfboards upside down because those fins are very sharp and unforced error, disaster. Two weeks later, I took the stitches out. Um, it's healing. Got my first set, first surf session in again this morning. Lovely. I have spent a lot of time thinking about what happened that morning, that surf session. It was wonderful and a mess at the same time. Back in the garden, I'm thinking, I'm sitting here, right here, like up, up there, like looking at the garden, thinking about that session, thinking about life, thinking about, I don't know, just things being simple <laughs> not so flipping complicated and you know I was thinking about oh yeah you know re remove a few complicated things remove a few parts from the system and everything's gonna be easier or simpler so bogus how many times we make this mistake over and over thinking oh just around the corner everything's gonna be a lot more calm and relaxed and is simpler and you know once I get all this figured out I get around the corner it'll just be like so silly so silly there is no such thing there is no such thing it's you know what you're taking with you 
taking with you around the corner. And <clears throat> you are left with, you remove a few parts, you're left with an infinitude of relationships. Like, I walk into this garden here, and I have just walked into the garden with 37 trillion homo sapien cells. What? I mean, there's already a lot going on here. Okay, and not even to mention the 37 other trillion cells that are not homo sapien, bacterial, fungal, archaean, protist, bam. What? All of that is me. That's me? All of that is me? Oh. I thought I was just me. I'm all this me I've never even met before. I mean, let's introduce ourselves. It's all over in our brain, in our gut, in our eyeballs, in our noses, in all the cells all throughout our whole body. All of that. What would happen to me if that was removed immediately? How long would I live? Would I live just as long? Would I suffer a great deal? Would I live a day? I'm curious about that. I wonder if there's any way to test that. In this garden, like this, look, okay, a teaspoon of soil, teaspoon of soil, right there. A billion bacteria in a teaspoon of soil. I'm very curious, I'm very curious, like in this eggplant that I just picked, snake of Mugla, Mugla town in Turkey as I understand it, never been there, but this was cultivated there. Like what other um, organisms live in single-celled whatever or live in this or in partnership with this fruit or with that the eggplant this is the plant right here um when i planted the seeds those seeds that germinated in this plant that began to grow that was you know little tiny tiny little seed and then it was still tiny tiny it began developing relationships with the organisms in the soil there. What do we know about those relationships? Do we know what the purpose is? Do we know what function? Do we know what the role, responsibilities, all these human terms <laughs> and thoughts and all the connotations associated with it, but do we know the roles and responsibilities, that sounds like a staff meeting at work or something, um, of each of these single-celled organisms, for instance, the eukaryotes, the prokaryotes. Do we know what would happen if we removed one of them or all of them from the soil? How long would this eggplant live? Sorry, I'm treating this eggplant poorly. Um, how long would it live? You know, how long would these, this eggplant live? Or this one? This one's Sicily, I think German. Um, how long would this tomato live? Rosa Siciliana, Rosa Sicilian. How long would that live? How, how, you know, what is the role of other organisms that are not Principese Borghese? What are the role of other organisms that live with this? In, in the well-being of that tomato. How many of these organisms in this soil, that little teaspoon of soil I was holding my hand, are known to science? How many are new species that have yet to have been um, identified by science? Do we know the significance of the relationships between any, any of these things? My point is, you take away something, try to make things simpler, you're still left with an infinitude of relationships. Now, you could take a negative view on that, you know, the infinitude of our ignorance, right? Like, don't know anything. There's just this explosion of relationships that nothing, nobody, no thing, no technology that we could ever conceive of can perfectly know all of these things that are exploding out in front of us it could not predict it what it is or the significance of any of it good lord we don't even know what is beneath our feet in this rather pedestrian setting 
Vor, you could look at it as uh, an infinitude of our abundance, the insane opportunity, the unknown, everything. There is newness at every frontier. There is opportunity to learn and explore and understand and develop and innovate and create at every frontier in every conceivable dimension, few of which we could even conceive of or have yet. Now that's something that something we create might be able to help us a lot with. I-E-A-I. -E I'm Matt Keen. Thanks for visiting Creating a Future We Want, the Evaluative Evolution Series. See you soon.